you know, they have a saying, a mother's work is really never done, and it is so incredibly true. As I think about just throughout the years watching Misty navigate through, uh, well, uh, three pregnancies in two and a half years because she couldn't keep her hands off of me. <laughs> Apparently, I can't, I've come up with no other reason <laughs> just to flatter myself. It's not true at all. Um, but seeing her get up so many times in the middle of the night and just taking care of our children and just continually managing as a CEO of the home, just the, the operations of it all, just watching her go. And not just her, all of you moms are just so incredible. And uh, we don't say it enough, but we love and appreciate you. And seriously, um, we, we could not exist as a family if it wasn't for you, the glue holding us all together. I, I think about the last... Oh, about the last month or so, in our home at least, we've, we've um, been very, very gainfully occupied. Our oldest son, for those of you who don't know, AJ married the love of his life, beautiful Lainey. And they, uh, they got married, and, and uh, our girls are seniors, our twin girls are seniors, and they'll be graduating here very, very soon this next week. And so there have been a lot of events, just event after event, party after party, after ceremony, ceremonies to come. And one night, I just remember uh, a couple weeks ago, we were in the kitchen and I was playing uh, the theme song that I, I, just, I nominated this to be her theme song, my brown eyed girl, Van Morrison. And I, sometimes I'll just play that just so I can get a dance out of her. And she was there with her girls there around the island and they were baking to their heart's content until probably two in the morning, just making all these dessert treats for the wedding. And I just thought she, I remember that night thinking she works so stinking hard. This girl is a workhorse. Like she just drains me watching her go around and around and around, just doing all the wonderful things she does. And the title of today's message, before I show this video that she did not know I was going to show, is Living for Purpose, Not Perfection. So she's going to kill me after I show this video because you're going to see that her kitchen and her home was not perfect, all right? It was a war zone, right? But she was operating within her purpose, and that is to be an incredible mom. And so I want you to see just a glimpse of what was going on a couple weeks ago preparing for the wedding. <laughs> That's the death stare. As you can see, the kitchen wasn't perfect. It's okay. There's laundry. There's, you know, there's baking goods all over the counter. I'm going to die. I it's know. Like I get it. The kitchen, like It's the been nice knowing up. you, church. It's been an honor to serve you <laughs> in this capacity. And I just want to say, if you have made Jesus Lord of your life, I will see you in heaven when you get there. And if you haven't, well, you probably need to make that decision today. It's all you, babe. It is true. I mean, we do have three services. So first service saw my shocked face because she any was, videos, she was mad. Any videos that are shot in our like, home are not Mother's intended Day? for public consumption. All right. My daughters had no idea that was showing until one of our band members in the back said, Misty, your kitchen was trashed. He knew he was just trying to get a rise out of me. And Blake goes, what are you talking about? And he was like the video and Blake goes, dad, <laughs> The fact is, most moms understand the myth that we are to be perfect. Even though we all know in our mind it's completely impossible, we always want to put that best foot forward. It's like when you are in public, you want your children to behave. You want them to have on clean clothes and look halfway put together because they are a representation of you, right? I remember when our kids were little and we would go to the grocery store and let's just be honest. I mean, when you have four toddlers that are literally all the same size, it kind of turns a couple heads more than just going into a store with one. But it didn't help that I dressed them alike because I basically I had two sets of twins. The boys are a year and 19 days apart. And then our twin daughters came like right after that. They're like 14 months between them and Ty. 
And so we would go to the grocery store and I would tell them, because they didn't have pickup, heaven help us. Like you all that have pickup, that is such a blessing. Write a thank you to everybody who made that possible through COVID, okay? There was no pull up, pop the hatch and they just load your Walmart groceries. No, no, no. You see, we actually had to put our kids into carts. And when you had two babies and two walking, where do the groceries even go? I mean, it was a circus. Okay. And I would teach the boys and Brad would teach the boys. You hang on to mama's cart. Okay. One girl would go up here and I would generally wear a backpack. All right. So that I had one twin here, one on top of the little push cart, a boy on each side. And we would have a little spot for groceries. And we would, before we would go in, we would always tell the kids, do not embarrass your mama. Don't do it or you're going to die. Do you understand me? I know you know how to behave. So I expect you to do it when we get inside. Don't you go acting like jack wagons on me inside of this store. Do you understand? Yes, we understand. Now, did it always happen? No, right? Never. I mean, they did generally hold on. And I would do this one thing. I mean, you cannot beat your child in public. Okay. I mean, seriously, come on now. So let's, the NyQuil did help a little bit. (laughs) Whatever. But I would do this. This is not in today's notes, but I will just help all you little mamas what out, we, okay? What are we doing? I'm going to show you. What See, are we doing? there's like this little fatty uh-huh. part uh-huh. on the back uh-huh. of the kid's arm. Uh-huh. And you can be in public, okay? And you can just, my Let's boys. Don't do it twice. Uh-huh. My boys and my girls knew if I got a hold of that flabby little part right there. You're done. And I pinched it. You're you done. better straighten up now or there were going to be massive consequences. But the fact is, all of us moms know that though we strive for perfection, we will never achieve it. We have those mom fail moments, not the ones that make social media, which is so incredible today that although we strive for perfection and we're the hardest on ourselves, now we have social media platforms where we can see the perfect mothers all in just a swipe, right? You just scroll and they've got it all together and all the perfect pictures and you're like, I suck. I mean, that's exactly how most of us moms feel. But I want to tell you that, you know, I'm just going to kind of share a couple mom fails for me. Because if you don't know, our our kids are now, as Brad said, one just got married. He's almost 21. We've got a 19-year-old son and then twin daughters that are 18. And so all of those fun years where I thought I was going to die are kind of behind me. And we're coming into a new season. But I remember one year... When our kids were still way smaller than me and they're stuck down and we were in the ER three times in six months with one kid. Okay. I mean, that is like a record. I mean, I like to set and break records. I think that was one, but the ER people did not think it was so funny. I mean, honestly, they thought there was a lack of parental guidance going on supervision in our home. I mean, I remember when we walked in, it was like the theme song to cheers. You'd hear where everybody knows your name. You're back. It's like, hey, what's up, everybody? Hey. But the crazy thing is I remember one day and every time, let me just help you out, it was Sunday afternoon. It was never because our children were sick, but it was these freak accidents because obviously I was not right there with them watching their every move. And they were so creative in what they found to do when mom and dad were not around. And one Sunday afternoon, Tyler decides to find this tent pole and go running through the yard as though that was a fantastic idea until the pole shoots right up to his lip, slicing it in half. Literally, about the same time this happens, we're hearing our daughter screaming out loud. We come running out from our Sunday afternoon nap because I thought it was a super spiritual thing to do to nap on Sundays. Mm. Apparently not. I stand corrected. We come running out to find Ty's lip literally wide wide open. open, blood gushing. About the same time, a neighbor boy, unbeknownst to him, the craziness of the Helton home, he comes pulling into our driveway, just stopping by to say hi. When all of a sudden I scream, can you just stay with the kids? We got to go to the ER. His eyes were huge, but he obliged. What else would you do with a psycho mom? You know, her kid is like dying in front of her. So I scoop him up. Brad drives like literally a hundred to get us to the ER. In the sweet minivan. In the sweet minivan. It was nice. I remember. God, rest his soul. 
He got stitches all the way down. They said he would be scarred for life. He probably was, but not just on his face. But then it wasn't about three weeks later when he is such a genius. We were also napping on a Sunday afternoon again. And he decided, you know what? There is something on the top of that shelf up there. And mom and dad are not in here. And I, I can't think I find will take a ladder. my mattress, flip it up on the wall. I'm talking the kid is like four, okay? Flips it up on the wall and decides he will climb that mattress. Well, it was ingenious till he got to the top of the mattress. And what does a mattress do but bends? So when that mattress bends, he comes flying down to catch the bottom of his lip on the edge of his bed, splitting open mm -hmm. the bottom. We barely got the stitches out of the top. Now we're headed back to the ER to have some in the bottom. This time it was not so fun. No, because Tyler they pull us in the back needles. room and they start asking these very strange questions. Right? And I'm like, oh, I get it. <laughs> You're calling you the think. police. <laughs> I understand what's happening. So we tried to explain the situation, the freak accident. But it wasn't about three months later. I'm thinking to myself, this, this craziness has to stop. I mean, twice in, two, in a year, that's enough. But no, three months later, AJ and Ty decide, they're all playing in the backyard. What could they get into in the backyard? I mean, honestly, we had a swing set and a six-foot-high fence around the entire property like because, prison. I mean, pretty much prison for children because they were little. And we were inside. Last nap I took on a Sunday for probably the next 10 years, for real, Okay. But the boys decided the tree in the backyard had one too many limbs and they needed to trim that tree. So AJ gets a saw out of Brad's tools and both the boys climb up in this tree, no ladder, just show me up the tree. We got a saw in our hand. The girls are always somehow right there just watching. Too bad they didn't have phones to take pictures. But both boys get up there. AJ sawing away, sawing away, and he's obviously just too slow. So Tyler says, let me climb out on the limb and put a little pressure on it for you, okay? That'll help. I mean... That ought to do it. I never had their IQ tested, but I know at this point they are genius. Ty just knew. We got to get this limb down, okay? So he goes climbing out on the edge of that limb. Of course, AJ continues to saw. You know the rest of the story. It was Ty about nine. Fell it was about nine. <laughs> 10 feet off the ground. Ty falls straight down because he was literally just laying on it. Bam! Onto his chest. He's not breathing. Not the girls breathing. go to squealing again. We wake up to the squealing noise to come running outside to think Ty's dead. Scooping the kid up and I'm literally thinking, this we is it. Go We're back. going to jail. I mean, we, we can't. It's over. We can't go back. We already made their list. <laughs> we ain't going back. Mom! Let's wait to see if his fail. lungs inflate and so, then we'll I mean, take it from there. For all you moms who have felt like failures this week, you know what? Join the club, okay? It is all right. We all mess up. We all make mistakes. There are moments you cannot keep your eye on them every moment of every day. There are days you're going to have a meltdown, and they have definitely thought mom has absolutely lost her mind, okay? My children can tell you stories, but that's not why they have, they have not been invited to the stage today, okay? Listen, the moral of the story, just don't have boys. <laughs> Because you didn't notice any stories about girls, did you? Well, I'm I just think saying. that is because we had boys first, and <laughs> right. they watched the boys do all the stupid things, okay? They got all the punishment. <laughs> like, Whoa, that the girls dumb. stood back like, you guys, <laughs> you it's going to turn died. out bad. But the fact is, today I want to talk to you about the fact that you don't have to be perfect, because it's not going to happen. So let me take the pressure off. Today we are going to talk about living with purpose, not perfection, as Brad said just a moment ago. You know, I want you to think about, when you think about the creation of the world, you think about how God created everything. He did everything with purpose. Nothing God created was created just by accident. Like, eh, oh, wow, that was bad. You know what I'm saying? No. He had a purpose for every single thing he created. Whether you are a mom, a dad, you're a single, you're a kid in this room, God has a purpose and he has a plan for your life. I want to read to you this morning from Ephesians chapter 5. We're going to start in verse 15 and it says this. Look carefully then how you walk. Live purposefully and worthily and accurately, not as the unwise and witless, but as wise that is sensible and intelligent people, making the most of the time that is buying back each opportunity 
because the days are evil. This is the apostle Paul talking and he says that we are to live purposefully. I looked up that word purposefully in the original language in the Greek and I think it's really interesting. The word means this, intentionally or deliberately. Not by accident, but with intentionality. We are to live on purpose. And this morning, I want you to understand that whoever you are in this room, if you're a father, then your purpose is to be the head of the home. We don't have time to teach on it today, but that's your role. If you are a child in this room today, you have a mom, you have a dad. It goes for all of us at all ages, to be honest. Our role is to honor our father and our mother. But there's a promise attached to that, that you'll live long upon the earth. The fact is, God has a purpose for all of us. And I want to dive a little deeper today into what's a mom's purpose? Why are we here? What's the goal over the next 18 years? Is it just to survive? Is it to just raise your kids without killing them and not going to jail? I mean, what is the purpose behind it? Some days I know you're wondering. There's days you lay your head on your pillow and the to-do list is still far too long. Your brain won't shut off. Well, you're trying to go to sleep and your husband is snoring right next to you because, I mean, like, no to-do list there. He's like, I'm good, man. I'm out. I'm not talking not about you, but anybody like in another particular. Another husband you know, right? <laughs> <laughs> not that I would know. Moms, your purpose is so incredibly right. important. A few years back, there was a study done and statistics uh, showed the greatest amount of influence in a child's life or a teenager's life where do you think that comes from? The greatest amount of influence. Check this out. The Bible, 25% influence. Being in a youth group, a, a student ministry, 25%. Pastor, 60%. Father, 64%. But moms, you get 87% influence in your child's life. What God has called you to do, the role that you play each and every day is extremely important. It's not only extremely important, but the enemy works overtime to distract you from your purpose. He wants you to be so busy taking care of your house and taking care of your kids that you miss the most important thing for which God gave you those children. And I'll just tell you today, your purpose, mom, your number one responsibility is to pass on your faith. There's a lot of things that you will do. You'll go to ball games and you'll cheer them on and be that psycho mom. Be that mom. Embrace it. Be loud. Be proud of your kids, all right? That was me. I'm honestly, I'm going to come and cheer your children on because mine graduate now. And I'm like, what am I going to do come sports season? I mean, I got to show up and be crazy. But the fact is, a lot of times we get distracted with the homework and the laundry and the dishes and the never-ending task list, and we forget that the years go by so fast. Guys, the days are so long. I know you've heard this. The days seem so long, but the years are so short, and I'm not going to cry, okay? Come see me on Friday. I'm just not going to do it today. But the Bible says very clearly, it is our role to pass on our faith. In 2 Timothy 1 and 5, the Apostle Paul is talking to a young minister named Timothy. I love what he said. He says this, I remember your genuine faith, Timothy, for you share the faith that first filled your grandmother Lois and your mother Eunice. I know that that same faith continues strong in you. What we see in this moment is that Paul is telling Timothy and reminding him, man, I see such a strong faith in you, and it's not a faith that I haven't seen before. Your grandma had that kind of faith, and your mom had that kind of faith, and now I see it in you, this third generation. As I say that, I want you to get a hold of something. You know, you can raise your kid to be the best in everything that they ever put their hand to. They can be the most incredible athlete. They can be the best academically. You can teach them everything that you know how to do on this earth, and they can be such a huge success with title and accolades and all the money in the world. But if they do all of that, and Jesus is not the Lord of their life. What was it all for? The Apostle Paul as well said, or, or actually I take it back, Matthew said this in Matthew 16, 26. Jesus said, and what would it benefit you if you gain the entire world but you lose your own soul? Is anything worth more 
than your soul. Nothing. So today, as we are wrapping up this message, I want to quickly give you three things, mom. How do you pass on your faith? How do you leave a legacy? And maybe you say, well, I've already raised my kids. And guess what, grandma, listen up. Listen, each and every person under the sound of my voice, you can take the same three tips and apply them to your life. But I'm going to talk specifically to moms for just a moment. The first thing is this, be intentional. Nothing's going to happen on accident. Nothing. I mean, you can wish it all day long, but nothing happens on accident. If I want to get in shape, I can think about it all day. I can watch the YouTube videos of other people working out. But at the end of the day, if something's going to change, it's because I am intentional about what I put in my mouth and what I do with my body, right? Same thing goes with our spirit. Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 5 says this, and you... Moses is talking to parents. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your mind and your heart and your entire being. These words which I'm commanding you this day shall be first, say first. They shall be first in your own minds and your heart. Then you shall teach them and impress them on your children. Here's what I want to tell you, moms. You need to be intentional about your own walk with God first. Because your children are watching your every move. And your faith is going to be caught more than it's taught. At the end of the day, they're going to watch you have those meltdowns. They're going to watch you in your moments of stress. They're going to watch you when you get up. I want to tell you, moms, be intentional about what you do with the beginning early hours of the day. Here's what I would encourage you to do. Get up yourself before your kids get up. Even if it's just a few minutes, you need to get your head on straight and spend some time with Jesus before your children start with the chaos of your day. You need to make sure that you turn on a little worship in your home so that when your kids get up, it's not you screaming like a psycho going through the house. Do not raise your hand if that's you, okay? You don't want to be that mom screaming and yelling because you've asked them three times to get up and they're not doing it. Kick on some worship. And for me, if they were not getting up, the worship got louder and louder and more intense. And I mean, it's like we're blaring the music. Nobody could sleep. But guess what? I wanted God's presence to fill my home before anything else. I wanted them to know that God has to be first. Because guess what? We were about to send them off to school. We were about to put them in a room all day long with other people, many of whom would not know Jesus, many of them who would not treat them the way they wanted to be treated, but we were going to be different. Be intentional about the time that you have with them, especially in the morning. I would encourage you, pray over them before they walked out the door. Brad and I started this when our kids were very small, and our kids are now, as we said, they're all pretty much adults. And every time before we leave the house, before they leave, it's like, no, 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 everybody circle up, circle up, come back, come back. We're going to pray. We do it every day. I don't care how old they are. If you're in my house, we're going to pray. Second thing I want to encourage you to do is be consistent. Be consistent. There are times that you will be so excited about starting something new or your kids have just gotten out of control and we're going to lay down the hammer and we are going to have some hard discipline and some hard rules in this house. Let me tell you something. Whatever you say you're going to do, do it. What would that mean? Out of emotion, don't run your mouth and say things you're not actually going to enforce like you're grounded for the rest of your life. No, they're not. Are you kidding? They are not grounded for the rest of their life. I'm going to rip your arm off and beat you with it. Exactly. You're not going to do that. So don't say you're going to do that. Jeez. But whatever you are going to do, there should be discipline. <laughs> They're the all Bi laughing because they've all said it. <laughs> <laughs> the Bible says very clearly that there should be discipline. That if you love your child, you will discipline your child. Right? Amen. But guess what? There are days it would be easier to let them run out acting like psychos than to put your foot down and to be consistent. And I can tell you, having almost adult children, we still deal right now. You live in my home. These are our rules. Is that easy? No. It's not. But the fact is, you have to be consistent. The final thing that I want you to know today is that you have to be 
teachable. Remain teachable. Titus 2 and 4 says this. These older women must train the younger women to love their husbands and their children. If you're a young mom, get around some moms who have already raised their children. Lean in. Ask them questions. Pour your heart out when you feel like a failure. Be okay with sharing with someone that I feel like I failed, that I raised my voice. I know I shouldn't have raised my voice. And you older moms, those of you who maybe you've already raised some kids, be willing to take a few moments to love on a younger mom, to encourage them when they aren't sleeping at night because that baby is crying and they feel like their whole world is gone because they're exhausted every single day of their life and they're not enjoying it and they're depressed. Lean in and encourage them. It won't always be this way. Remind them that you have a purpose bigger than just changing diapers and doing dishes. You are raising the next generation. You are raising a leader right now. Don't let that mouthy teenager drive you into the ground. You stand up and you realize that you are raising a leader who is going to change lives and change the world. Why? Because you're going to pass on your faith as a strong mom, a woman of God. Don't ever let the enemy push you to the point where you feel like, you know what? I'm far gone. I do not want to continue to do this. The apostle Paul said this, and I love it. He said in Galatians 6 verse 9 and 10, so don't allow ourselves to become fatigued in doing good. At the right time, we will harvest a good crop if we don't give up. Moms, don't give up. Do not give up. Don't let the enemy distract you. You have a purpose. You've got kids, and I don't care if you're a grandma. you got grandkids. You be intentional. You be consistent. You be teachable. Each and every one of us can apply it to our life. We need to live on purpose every day for the purpose and plan God has for our lives. Amen. We leave a legacy when we live on purpose. It doesn't matter if you're a mom or not, but when you live according to the purpose that God has given you, you leave a legacy to those around you. I love it. One generation to the next. I want to pray a prayer over you today, um, specifically over our moms. If you would, let's bow our heads at this time as we wrap up today's message. Father, we are so grateful for the amazing moms, God, that you've put in our lives as a church family. We just pray, God, your blessings on them today. We thank you for them, God. We admire them. We do not overlook their hard work and their dedication, their sacrifices, God, their blood, sweat, and tears. They're amazing, God, and they're such a blessing and such a gift, God, to all of us. God, we pray that they would feel our love today as they leave this place, those watching online, those in this room. But God, more than anything, for all of us who have heard today's message, I pray that our hearts would be stirred, God, to want to live our life according to your purpose that we would be able to, as a result, make an incredible impact on the lives of others around us to the next generation. God, you've called us, you've equipped us, you've given us experiences and wisdom. And I just pray, God, that we would recognize our value in the lineage of legacy. I pray, God, that we would recognize those that you've placed in our lives that are younger than us that we can pour into, that we can, we can share our experiences, we can pray over them and encourage them and help them, God. Lord, we love you and we thank you so much, God, for your word today. With heads bowed and eyes closed, the most important part of every service is to give you the opportunity to know Jesus if you've not made him Lord of your life. And so whether you're watching online or you're in this room today, I want to ask you that question. Have you, have you made Jesus Lord? That means have you asked God to forgive you of your sins? Have you believed upon Jesus to be the Son of God, knowing that it's only through Him that you can be saved? Have you confessed in your mind, in your heart, but also with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord? Has there been a change if you haven't made that decision, I want to encourage you right now. It is the best decision and the most important decision you will ever make in your entire life. So having said that, with heads bowed and eyes closed, if that's you and you need to make that decision today and you want to make heaven your home, would you just raise your hand right now? Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. Raise your hand in this room if that's you. Thank you. I see your two hands. 
up the middle. Anybody else today? If you're watching online, you can comment in the comment section below and just say all in. We want to include you in that. Thank you. I see your hand up in the bleachers on my left. I see your hand up front and on my left. Thank you. Four people just changed their eternal address. Isn't that awesome? Isn't that awesome? People saying yes to Jesus, making heaven their home. Isn't that awesome? Thank you, Father God. So let's pray this prayer together as a church family. And if you're watching online today, we want you to join us in this prayer. Father, I know I'm a sinner in need of a Savior. Please forgive me of my sins. I believe with all my heart, Jesus is the Son of God. I believe it's through Him and only Him that I can be saved. I confess with my mouth, Jesus Christ is Lord. I make Him the Lord of my life today. In Jesus' name, everybody said, Amen. Amen.